right, so we're going to start up with uh, exercise 223, which is essentially a build upon what we did last class. We're just moving from the interior to the exterior, which means we're going to add some more uh, lights. I'm going to walk you through adding a few different types of lights. We'll talk about what those are in, in a little bit. Um, and then you guys will have the rest of the day to work again. It's kind of time to start wrapping things up, though. Uh, and I know that sounds a little scary <laughs> to say that, but um, we don't have a whole lot of time left in the semester. Uh, I went through this with my morning class, but just, just to put things in perspective, we have this week, today and Wednesday. We have next week, which is Thanksgiving week. We do have class both on Monday and on Wednesday, as much as I would like to have that off. Uh, we have class, so you should be here. Um, and then you come back after Thanksgiving. We have Monday and Wednesday, and then the following Monday, everything's due. So essentially, that means we have six class days left for you to work on stuff. It takes a long time to do these renderings and get good quality rendering results. So leaving yourself time to, to let the renders run is important. If you look at how I've set things up, at this point, you should be pretty much ready to do your final renderings for your interior and exterior day and night renderings. Your building should be pretty much done at this point. You should have added the detail and that sort of thing because next class, we're actually, it's the way the semester works out. We're skipping exercise 224 and we will do exercise 225 next class. Um, we're going to start cutting a section through the building. And when you do that, you want the interior of the building to basically be done because we're going to be cutting through it. After that, for um, exercise uh, 226, 20, 227, 228, I think, um, those we're going to actually do line drawings from your building. So you've spent all this time doing a 3D model. How do you get a good plan out of it? How do you get a good section out of it? How do you get a good elevation out of it? Uh, so we'll work through those uh, strategies as we go forward too. So really at this point, the 3D model should be almost done because we're going to start making line drawings and whatever. So the idea is today, maybe, maybe Wednesday, you should be done pretty much uh, and ready to do the renderings, ready to move on, do some line drawings, uh, etc. That's a good thing for the semester because a lot of you have 220 and a lot of you are busy with other things and you can do that toward the end of the semester rather than this. So I'm really trying to help you out with how this stuff comes together. So for our purposes today, we're going to move to the exterior so that we can do the exterior night rendering. Uh, I went ahead and I opened up both my retreat base file and also my master site file. So I have them both and I can flip back and forth between them. This was the rendering that I was working on last class. This was my interior um, nighttime render. We're gonna move to the exterior to do the exterior nighttime render. I could use the same view that I had for the exterior render, essentially just flipping myself back out to the exterior and then perform the same render. Uh, if I'm doing this, though, it makes sense to go ahead and start thinking about what the exterior lights of the building would look like. How do I want to light up the, the building, uh, etc. Now, depending on where you're, you're building your building, in our case, it, does, it makes no difference. But if you were building it in um, a particular city or county, there may be ordinances about what kind of exterior lighting you're allowed to have. Uh, one of the big ones is everything should be dark skylight, uh, which basically means every light has to be turned down and covered so you don't see any exposed light. Uh, in our world, we can light this up uh, and show it off in the night setting, so there's no reason not to add some extra exterior lights. So when I do this, I need to think about where do I want to install these lights and what should they look like. Um, one of the typical lights that people tend to use uh, are lights that wash walls. So we start with a light, a little ribbon light along the wall, and we want to wash down the, the surface of the wall. I would do that using a uh, rectangular light, and I can do that right here along that edge. I have this little lip here, and I'll hide the light up underneath that. I'm not going to worry about the fixture for this light because um, the, the fixture is really hidden underneath that little lip. So I'm going to go ahead and jump straight to the rectangular light tool. It's this one right here. And when I create it, it's going to ask me for one corner or one edge of the light. Uh, let me turn on some snaps here. And I can go right along this edge to right there. And I can come out 
to right there, and then I end up with this really long, skinny, rectangular light. The direction of the light is, is wrong, so it's, go, it's pointing up this time, so I need to flip it. So I'll go ahead and type flip, and it's going to point down, because uh, that's the direction I want it. Now these are, when there are rectangular lights like this, these are really tricky to figure out what the right settings are, because uh, rectangular lights are based on the size of the rectangle in terms of how much light you get out of it, so it's going to be a little bit of a guess. I do have to make sure that it's not intersecting with any of the objects in my scene, so I'm going to move it slightly down. It doesn't have to be quite that far. Oh, come on. There we go. Slightly down. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and edit the, the light in V-Ray. So with the light selected, I'll come over here to my properties and click on the Edit V-Ray, uh, Edit in V-Ray Asset Editor. There it is. There's my V-Ray rectangle light. I could rename this uh, to be uh, Exterior Wall 1. And then um, we'll go ahead and edit those settings. So our color here, I'm going to change my color to 0 to 255. is 255, 214, and 170. Oops, 170. There we go. And it does not want to change its units on me. That's interesting. Let me open the drawer to the side here. It's there. there we go. I want to change to watts. Uh, the rest of this is good. Under options, though, I'm going to choose to make it individual, and I don't want it to be double-sided. The rest of this all seems OK. All right, pretty good. So I have it turned on. There it is. And we'll jump back into my view here, and we'll go to the exterior render 1. And I'll do a quick test render to kind of check settings and whatever. Now, when I do this test render, I'm going to drop the size of the rendering down. So let me click on the settings here. Uh, I'm going to drop the quality down to medium. And then under output here, I'm going to make it nice and small. So we'll maybe do only 100 high. And then we'll go ahead and do a uh, test render here. And all I'm trying to do is double check that that little ribbon is showing up. It looks like it's a little bit soft, so I might increase the, uh, the power on that just a little bit. So it's currently set at 30 watts. I might go to maybe 100, and we'll see how that one plays out. Then I'm going to recreate this same light right up under this one right here. So I'll do the same thing. I'm going to go to my rectangular light. I'll start right there. Come over to about there. And there it is. Pointing the wrong direction, so I'll type flip. Edit V-Ray Asset Editor, same thing, 255, 214, 170. In watts, go up to 100. My options here, I'm going to make sure that it is invisible. Here we go. Uh, I could rename this one to be Exterior Wall 02. And there you go, there's that one. Let me switch over into the front view. Same thing I did last time where I moved it down just a little bit. So we'll go to Move. Oops. There we go. Move. I'll drop it down just a whisker. Close enough. And then I can jump back into my perspective view. We'll go to set view, exterior, render one. And we can do that same little test. And we should see both of those lights showing up. So that's good. I have both those lights showing up. Now, as I look at this scene, we can see that I'm not getting good uh, light penetration coming out of my windows. Uh, the only one I'm getting it out of is the door right here. So that must have to do with how the glass is reflecting, which is a bit of a problem, uh, because obviously I want the glow coming out of the, the building itself. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and save this master site because I have those little pieces in, and I'm gonna have a look at the um, retreat base file, and I wanna look at what's happening with my glass. So over here on my layers, if I look at what glass I'm using, it looks like I'm using a glass tempered. Um, and for whatever reason, that doesn't seem to be working. So I may need to adjust my glass a little bit. So that's the glass that I was using. Let's try another glass and see if we can get something a little bit better. Worst case, I'll just use something transparent. But I'd like to not have to do that. Let's use just this regular plain glass. I'll load that one over here. And then I need to change it where it's being used. So we use the regular glass. And I want to see where else. Oh, I am using doesn't even have, this one doesn't even currently have glass on it, that window, so I might have to go in and fix that. Let me go ahead and save this and we'll see if that glass is even working. So I'll jump back to my um, master site file here. We'll go to edit, blocks, block manager, and we'll update it. Okay, so if I come over here and I look at my layers here, my glass layer should have uh, that glass on it. Um, so these windows sh should be all that glass now. Let's take a quick look at the render and take a, take a see. Still not getting as much out as I would really like. Um, let me verify that my lights are installed. Yes, all my lights are installed inside. So I really should be getting more. Uh, so in this case, what I might do is I might come in here and look for my glass layer. There it is. And just turn off the glass and then do a quick render and see see if I'm getting more um, visible light. So that looks a little bit better. Um, and so until I solve what's wrong with the glass, which I will, I'm just gonna turn off the glass and that way we'll be able to see into the building a little bit more. So if I were to render it now, There we go, we're seeing into the building through the windows. So I'm making adjustments as it goes because this is again about um, what this is ultimately gonna look like. Okay, so I have that part set and I have the, uh, the light being cast there. Now maybe I want to illuminate the, uh, the front wall here. So I could do the same kind of down light or I could do some up little spotlights that would be shining up from these posts. So I can go back into my spotlight. There's my spotlight tool. I'll start right there, and I'll do the same uh, ratio that I did before, diameter of one foot, or excuse me, radius of one foot, and I'll do a height of one foot, like that. There's my light. I'm gonna rotate it, 3D. So that I can have it shining over toward my building a little bit more, maybe about like that or so. So I just use Rotate 3D to get there. There's my first little light shining up toward my building. Uh, let's do the settings before I copy it. So I'll open uh, my V-Ray Asset Editor. There's my V-Ray Spotlight. We'll call this House Lights. Uh, and let's see here. We'll leave it at 30, but I'm going to switch it into Watts. My color will be 255, 214, and 170. 
and my uh, decay is going to be inverse square. And the rest of that all looks OK. I can then copy this to the other little posts here. So I can go to copy. Oops. Helps if I can type copy. And so now I have those lights. Let's put, add one more right there. And so I have those lights on the building. Let me go back into my set view, and I'll go to exterior render 1. There it is. And we can do another little test render. And this time I'm starting to get some shine on the walls themselves. So you see I'm kind of working through, deciding how much light needs to be on the building, etc. So this is, again, all about uh, my lighting settings. It doesn't appear from these views that I'm seeing too much of the background or too much of the sky. Uh, so I may end up adjusting my background image a bit. If I go into V-Ray here, I can go to my settings and under my environment. Uh, remember, I have my background environment here. It's set at 0.25. Let's go up to 1.0. And then I can do that test render again and see. There you go. Now I'm starting to see some of that, that background. Um, you guys probably still aren't seeing it there. So it's, it's kind of a fine line of, am I seeing enough? Do I want to have a little bit of a glow in the background uh, for the night sky, or do I want to have it pitch black? So you kind of work your way through as you start to create this. So I'll go ahead and click on Stop here and not continue the rendering. So the next uh, thing that sometimes people like to add, and this is where I start to just kind of go off on tangents and, and add stuff to the building or whatever, but uh, I've, I've had a lot of people request pools or some kind of water feature, fountains, that kind of thing. So uh, I'll show you how to add that particular piece in. Let me go ahead and minimize this, and I'm going to go back to my um, retreat base file right here. And I need to think about where does that pool belong? Where do I want the pool to be? Do I want it to be uh, hanging off the side of the building? Uh, I've done this enough times to where I actually do have some pools that I could just turn on and work with. Uh, but I'll do it fresh for you guys as well. Um, it works easiest if I put it right here. Again, it's based on the design, where would be the right place to have it, um, and you kind of have to think through it. So if I'm going to do a pool, I have to actually manufacture the parts of the pool. So I have to think about what it's going to look like, uh, where the various pieces of the pool are going to be, etc. So if I were to add it in this lower corner here, first thing I would need would, would be some more... Um, Sorry, let me turn on a few of these snaps here. I need to have an understanding of how big it really should be. So uh, let's see here. Let me just do a polyline around the outside here. Um, so maybe I want it to be, uh, let's say, 10 feet. And we'll come across to be in line with that outer edge there. And we'll come out by 10 feet there something like that. Then I have to think about what the little uh, edge would look like. I have a little edge right here that I could use, but I'm just going to make the same uh, little, little piece. I'll use a box and I'll use this as a guide. So I'll pick there, and I'll pick there, and then I pick my height. Then I'll take that piece that I just made and I'll move it. to right there. I'm going to shrink this one down, so I'll use a scale 1D to change the length on this one from there to that corner right there. I'll take the same piece, I'll copy it, I'll put it right at the end, right there. Then I'll take it and I'll rotate it That's just a regular rotate, and then I'll move it so it's going right like that. Then I'll do a scale 1D again and change it so that it gets a little bit longer. Actually, I'm going to mirror this one first. Well, let me adjust the size here. 
this really should stick over so I have the same overhang. Oh, come on. It's being so nice to me. Let's try that one more time here. There we go. Scale 1D. Adjust that out there. I'll take this piece and mirror it. The midpoint there. And now I'll scale this one. To match up with the end. So essentially that's the border around the pool itself. I need this same kind of a wall underneath the pool. So we could do the, uh, I could just take that line that I created, that line right there, and I could extrude it straight down to match up with the bottom there. So that gives me that piece. Uh, oops. Didn't look like it extruded this. Those obviously weren't joined together. There we go. So now I have that part. I need the interior of the pool though. So I need to think about how to create the interior of that pool. Um, I should also probably make all of these on their own layer. Let's create a new layer for pool three. So let's take all of that and put it on this layer. There we go. And then I need to think about what the interior of the pool would look like. So let me duplicate the edges of the interior. So I'll take that and not that one, that one. And not that one. There we go. And that edge right there. And I'll hit enter. That gives me those lines. And at this point, it might help to turn the pool three off. And that leaves me with just my little yellow lines here. I need to work with those a little bit. So I'm going to use a uh, trim command here to trim off the excess. And it may help to switch temporarily into wireframe so I can see it. Oh, looks like those don't quite intersect completely. Let's do a fillet of those with a radius of zero. There to there. And same thing from there to there. All right, so now I could take this curve, this curve, this curve, and this curve. And those are going to be part of my pool. So I'm going to change them onto, uh, well, let's leave them where they are right now. Uh, next thing I need is I just need some profile curves to represent uh, the pool itself. So if I started in the middle here, uh, I might want to go down to the deep end of the pool. So we'll say this needs to go down, I don't know, um, eight feet. And then we'll come across. good opportunity to use your um, relative coordinates. So I would say at negative, I don't know, uh, six feet, comma, four feet. That's too, uh, too abrupt. Let's say at negative six feet, comma, two feet. There we go. And then maybe this comes up a little bit longer. So at negative eight feet, comma, two feet. There we go. And then we'll finish off. Extend it out like that. And we'll come down to meet it there. Let me go ahead and trim with these two so I can get rid of that. So essentially what I'm working on here is the profile of the pool itself. Oops. Didn't come straight down. Try that again.
There we go. Now I have a better look at the profile. Uh, so I should probably round this out a little bit. So I'll do a fillet with, uh, let's say, a radius of one foot. And we'll smooth these guys out just a little bit. Something like that. Now I have that profile. I need the profile going in the opposite direction. So I'll come in here. And this side's kind of a wall already, so uh, there's not too much I can do there. Go about like that. go. Oops. Go from there. I need perpendicular. That's what I'm missing. There we go. Perpendicular. There we go. Get rid of that part. And then same thing with my fillet there and there, and there and there, and there and there. Perfect. And I'm going to join these guys together. So this should look an awful lot like a curved network. So all I need to do is I need to take the curves that are going in each direction. Oops, looks like these didn't get joined. There we go, that's joined. And then we can take the curves in each direction. So those are going that way. This group is going this way. And I can go into network surface and I can build out the interior of the pool like that. So I have the interior made there. I can turn back on the pool three. Now I have the exterior of the pool. Sounds pretty good. We can switch into my uh, shaded mode to see it. There's the pool itself. There's not exactly a set of stairs, but maybe you just jump in or something. Uh, I don't need to keep doing this uh, for too long. Last thing we need is we need the water in the pool itself. So I'm going to use a uh, rectangle corner to corner so that I can create oops, the water, something like that. And so now it's a matter of assigning the materials. So um, if I were to switch this into my uh, rendered mode here, We'd see the materials on the outside. That helps. Uh, and so I'm going to, for the most part, match my materials and match my mapping. Um, and so let's see. This and this need to have the concrete applied. So I'll right click, and I'm just going to apply it to the selection. There it is there. The edges here. Forget what material this has on it. Let me take a quick look. It has the granite on it. So we'll go ahead and take these pieces and apply the granite material. Apply material to selection. There we go. Uh, the interior of the pool needs to have some kind of a material on it. Let me hide the water for a second. There's the interior of the pool. That needs to have some kind of a material on it. For that, I might do uh, a concrete or even just a very plain gray. Let's see here. I'm just going to create a material. 
call this pool bottom. There we go. Uh, and I'll right click it on there, apply to selection. Okay, so now the pool bottom has its color on it. That's good. Uh, the last thing would be the water itself. So let me show, there's the water itself. Now on the water itself, I haven't tried the current V-Ray uh, materials on it, uh, but we could go in and take a look at the various water materials and maybe one of those would work. Uh, I do know that I have a material that works pretty nice that you can download from the course website. I already have it on my flash drive here. And it's under water. And it's the small one. It's the water fountain. And we can go ahead and load that one in. There it is. And I can apply that to um, that selection there. So I have that all applied. Now that I'm done with that, I'll go ahead and save it. I'll go to File and then Save. Oh, I didn't match my mapping on my texture maps. So let's make sure that these match correctly. Um, so I'll go over to the texture mapping here. Uh, I want to match the mapping to that. These objects here. I want to match my mapping to that poly surface. There we go. Now that they're mapped, I can go ahead and go to File and then Save. Excellent. And then I'll jump back over into my master site file. Go to Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. Linked file is newer. We'll go ahead and update that one. There we go. And so now I have my pool added to this. So the last thing though is pools typically have lights on them, so we might as well put a light in the pool itself. So um, once again, I'm back here. I'm gonna go ahead and use a rectangle light. So I'll use this light here, and I'll make the rectangle light the size of the water. So I'll go from there to there, and I'll come right over to here. That. There it is. I want this light, same as the rest of these, so it's not coplanar. So we'll move it down a bit, just like that, so it's below the surface of the water. Then we need to edit that light. So I'll go into my V-Ray Asset Editor. We can call this Pool Light. There it is. So under the settings, it's going to be a little bit different. So we're still going to switch to watts. My intensity is going to be more like 400, probably because it has to go through the water a little bit. Uh, might end up being less, but under color, instead of doing the 255, 214, 170, this is your opportunity to pick a bluish color instead because it's coming through the light. Uh, typically, pool lights have colors associated with them anyway, so we can pick that color. Under our options, we want to make sure that it's invisible, and all of that looks pretty good. So it's now time to set up an exterior render where maybe we can see the pool a little bit. So not that this particular view you'd ever get to have. Well, maybe we'll do it right about like that. Let me pan this down a little bit. And let's see if I have nothing selected. I'm going to switch to more of an 18. It's a little bit wider angle. Oops. Adjust this a bit. Maybe about like that, and we'll give it a go. And so same thing here under my V-Ray. When I go to render, I want to make sure under my render settings, my output, it's small initially, so we can see, is it working? Do I get the glow that I'm after? And yes, I'm getting the glow that I'm after. You can see the bluish glow. It might not be quite the right blue, uh, so I may have to tweak that just a little bit. But I think at this point, I'll let it run so that you guys can see it a little bit later on. But there's no reason why you guys can't get started doing your rendering. I do.